Hello and welcome back to another video. Now you saw my recent prediction on the 2020 election, but let's talk about something that could really impact it in the next couple of weeks. And that is the stimulus talks, right? Now that's in the news and it's very big. And you know why? It's very critical because you have so many people that are talking about this and the talk is really uh, um, when we go get our second stimulus checks okay so when you look into the search engine clearly it's a very big deal and um, we're talking about trillions of dollars in aid we do have an epidemic the coronavirus and um, while I don't really care too much uh, this is very important so I have to cover this okay now the first thing that we did was the CARES Act and when you look at the coronavirus aid relief and economic security act you look at a 2.2 trillion dollar economic stimulus um, that was signed by Trump in March 2020, and this was the subsequent, um, the very beginning of the federal government subsidizing a lockdown on massive scale, okay? So this included $300 billion in stimulus checks and a $260 billion increase in unemployment benefits and basically giving loans or even, um, or, you know, a lot of things where if you furlough your employees and you shut down your biz, small business, the government will subsidize that. So that's what happens over here. Um, clearly, it does have a, this is the largest bill that's ever been passed. And this, even though it unemployment went up and everything went worse, clearly uh, did save the economy from falling even further and having more economies shut down. And the provisions also include you know, $130 billion to medical and hospital industries, which is supposed to be helping them, even though virtually no hospitals even filled up. And the subsidization of ventilators uh, were the only things that were necessary for these hospital hospitals, really. So this $130 billion was wasted. And when you look at the FDA, this was supposed to be advancing the, the medical process of finding a vaccine, which is good deregulation by the government. And then when you look at, in particular, $145 million in grants over a five-year period to promote telehealth, that's clearly just some social engineering by the left. And this is an important part of having the Congress be controlled by the Democrats because they will put in poor barrel spending, as John McCain would say. Yes, he was a faggot, but you have to learn from some bad people, okay? And the plan is that they're going to try to offset some of the uh, health care costs of going to meet your, uh, your health care provider by just calling them, which is kind of lame. But I suppose it does save money, and it is faster, so that's kind of convenient. But we shouldn't be subsidizing it at all, so that's an overstep of government. Um, increases Medicare payments to insurance providers from then to the... To New Year's um, 2021 and I think this is a waste they don't need any more money than they have and just paying them what they are losing for, because the coronavirus is already enough so I don't see why we have to pay them even more so that's one thing that I have to criticize as well and then these loans are supposed to help Main Street by helping uh, small uh, people that lay off employees get paid back so that they keep them employed instead of laying them off which uh, artificially is in, uh, inflating the the employment rate, which is a good idea, honestly, in a short-term basis. But of course, when you look at this, there's a ton of corruption in these big congressional programs. You look over here, and you look at the the Kennedy um, the Kennedy Museum Center or whatever it is, and that literally took like twenty-five million dollars in stimulus, fired all of its employees, and gave five million dollars to the Democratic Party. So clearly, the, you know, that's impeachable, I think, in my idea. That's really evil. And you look at, you know, criticisms of Trump getting bailouts for his hotels or some of Trump's allies getting help, like his homosexual um, intelligence advisor or whatever. You know, of course you can have those problems, but that's what happens when you have such a big vote and you can't have transparency as to who's voting for what. And that's clearly why Thomas Massey protested this vote and wanted to vote against it. But not only that, but to have people vote in person so you can hold accountable all those rhinos, all those leftist Democrats that are voting for this corrupt bill. And surely, passing this is better than not passing it at all. But there is a ton of things you can cut from this. So here you are. $2,400 to married couples or 1200 to every person. And that's it. And you get money for your children 
that are dependents or whatever but you can't you can only get income if you get less than a hundred thousand dollars a year so if you work hard and you're an engineer you make one hundred and twenty thousand you get nothing but if you're some mid-level electrician you make fifty grand you get paid more so that's kind of interesting right how the government subsidizes laziness but whatever when we look at the stimulus checks these were kind of pointless because the whole point of the government locking things down is so that you can keep your employment you can keep your salary and you don't get evicted and that's basically it why do you need a thousand dollars that 300 billion was a waste of money and what did people spend the stimulus on only fans playstations game games you know vapes are you kidding me what a weak sauce thing and then when you look at the federal pandemic unemployment compensation fpuc fpuc um it established an extra six hundred dollars in unemployment to anybody so if i worked at mcdonald's got unemployed i'd get another 600 a week which is a lot of money given the minimum wage in most areas especially like in wyoming your income could be like doubled which is ridiculous and clearly this uh spent over like a hundred or two hundred billion out of the out of this uh cares act so already 500 billion dollars of this act was complete bs and i hate this now look at this we're giving money to schools why are we giving money to schools when they're closed if they're closed they probably aren't paying for lunches they are not paying for in physical cleaning of the school right i mean common sense they're going to spend like maybe 20 percent less in terms of of um expenses um and having online school than otherwise so that's probably why they're subsidizing and i say it's probably why because this teacher the teachers union all are hand in hand with the democratic party and they're going to do whatever they can to make more money and work less so if you're going to shut down the school then why should i be paying you more to open back up three months after the virus is done what a oh my god very ugh, that's so gay and then when you look at what else do we have here moratorium on evictions 120 day moratorium okay lasting until july 24th and the president did extend that i believe so this was very important um i do think that you shouldn't really get evicted and i think the government should subsidize this for like a couple of weeks but again we're dragging it on for four months 120 days and then even longer which is what donald trump did and what the congressional democrats wanted to do for even longer than the president wanted to is clearly a bad move and it is very unethical to have the government subsidize anything for more than six months at a time right well at, at least any new new stuff right now we're gonna get to all of this now mitch mcconnell was gonna lower this price bill surely we spent about two trillion dollars on this but of course aoc wanted to double the spending it was completely gay this passed the congress unanimously 96 to 0 of the people that did not vote for this was john thune who was who felt ill john thune is very important because he's probably gonna be the the majority leader in 20 years maybe so john thune strategically said oh i felt ill well really really dude you could have just worn a mask wore gloves go and vote and to you know use your balls and take accountability for voting for this disastrous bill but no he feigned in illness when in reality he probably didn't have coronavirus so who cares and then rand paul had coronavirus and we all know that randall howard paul probably wouldn't have even voted for it anyway and mitt romney and mike lee pro well mitt romney would have voted for it because he's gay and then mike lee probably wouldn't because he's a libertarian a libertarian but of course the house vote is very important and it was un unanimous and it was unrecorded so that means we don't know who voted for it it's just that oh well it seems like everybody did so that's very stupid that's clear 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 and then when we look at the deficits introduced by the cares act it looked like it was going to increase the deficit by 1.8 trillion dollars over 10 years and that would include a trillion dollars expansion in mandatory outlay so that's medicare spending a 450 billion dollar decrease in revenue so less taxation and then a 330 billion 
increase in discretional outlay stemming from emergency supplemental appropriations, okay? So a lot of this trillion dollars in mandatory outlay seems like BS and that could have gone down. And then the revenue thing wouldn't have been a problem if you would just not lock down or if you lock down for maybe two weeks and not like th five months, okay? So this is completely, so $500 billion of this is completely the problem of the government and then you could debate this trillion dollars as well. So very, very important. Now we look at the economic impact and not good. Maybe it was worth it. So this is going to be notorious. It'll be like the 2009 TARP bill under Obama. Did it save us from a recession or a Great Depression? Was it really worth it or was it a corporate bailout? Yet we will not know. So let's look at this. The CARES Act, in terms of spending, was mostly towards corporate loans, small business loans then, household payments, unemployment, tax deferrals and deadlines, aid to states, etc. So when we look at this, public transit, why do we have to pay more into public transit? Cut that, $25 billion out. That's the Democrats' BS. Airlines and cargo grants, useless. Cut that. Airlines and cargo grants, again, useless. Hospitals and vets care, fine. Eight to states. I don't want to subsidize New York spending too much money. I don't want to subsidize Bill de Blasio and other homos running their country bad. Shout out to Cuomo. He's a terrible governor as well. Cut that. 150 out. Tax referrals and deadlines. Also, when you say, oh, we're in debt, you know, the states say, well, according to you guys, you have a balanced budget amendment in virtually all of the states and you are at a way lower debt, not even half of the debt that the government has. So why are you asking the federal government to pay? Plus, you're going to pay taxes on that debt anyway. So who cares? Might as well tax the local citizenry so that there's less corruption than be taxed by the federal government and have the IRS fumble that money around for a couple of years. And then unemployment insurance. Like I said, you shouldn't get paid extra for not working. That's retarded. So that could have been cut severely. Corporate loans. I do believe in the corporate loans and the small business loans, but at the same time, should we give corporate loans to the Playboy company? Should we give corporate loans to certain companies that are like completely gross? I don't think so. Cut like $20 billion off of that. And then should we subsidize tobacco industry? I don't think so. Cut more. And then corporate loans just looks bad. The far left are going to attack you. And of course, AOC did that. Now, when we look at the HEROES Act, this is the second part of uh, legislation. And this is the Health and Economic Recovery Omnibus Emergency Solutions Act. And this is acting about $3 trillion in stimulus in response to COVID, and this passed the Democratic House of Representatives 217 to 189. So this was made, uh, basically a partisan vote. And this is approximately a new amount of $1.13 trillion in emergency supplemental appropriations to federal agencies, as well as economic assistance to all the states and stuff like that. It would also see the expansion of unemployment, which I said was stupid. Increase in, in food stamps, which is stupid, right? It's like people are getting fat in this epidemic because they're stuck in their house, and you want to give them more food stamps? Lamal? What jokes? Increase funding for utilities and job training. Why job train when you can't even get, like, the whole point is to stay in your house. Why are you job training people? All right? So this is a lot of stupid stuff. Okay, then we're going to increase um, funding for testing, which we already have too much testing to be fair. Like, why are, we have more testing than a lot of the world's countries put together. We have about a 10% positivity rate. So, over, like, 9 out of 10 tests are completely useless. And contact tracing, I heard, wasn't even worth it. So that's kind of dumb. So that's very important, you know. They also want to give revenue to the U.S. Postal Service when the U.S. Postal Service should be fixing itself and it should be asking more of Amazon and big corporations to pay their fair share in terms of paying for packages instead of subsidizing it through the government. And we should be making the U.S. Postal Service more privatized so it can pay for itself and not just be funding it more and more and more and more. Okay? That's also very key. Now, the Senate Republicans call this thing dead on arrival and it's unrealistic. So Chuck Schumer particularly said that um, we are not going to subsidize anything that the, gov the Republicans want to spend $1 trillion in the new stimulus, the Democrats want to spend $3 trillion, and Nancy Pelosi told uh, Mitch McConnell to, let's say, you raise the spending $1 trillion and we'll lower it $1 trillion. So that's about $2 trillion, which is stupid because what the Democrats are doing ostensibly is saying, we're going to spend a ton of money 
and a lot of it's going to be useless. You just cut out the useless part, and we're going to spend two trillion instead of one trillion, which is completely useless again. So, um, complete waste of money. And the Republicans are smart, and they're going to have Donald Trump do an executive action, which will do another stimulus by himself, which I think is kind of like physically impossible, but still. And this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted the Democrats to spend too much money, have the Republicans not do anything about it, and because they're not doing anything about it, people are going to run out of money, and they're going to have to open everything back up three months sooner than what the Democrats wanted, which means the economy is going to pick up at a faster rate than what we would be doing under the Democratic rule. And the whole point of the Democrats doing this is for them to grandstand in the virus and for the economy to stay bad so that in November when you vote for Sleepy Joe instead of Trump, you're going to say, well, his economy is bad. It's like, well, the Democrats want more lockdowns than the Republicans, and clearly the economy is going down because of the virus and because of the placebo effect that it has on the lockdowns, of course. Now, well, we have more than 160,000 Americans are dead. Okay, yeah, sure. But how many people do we have infected? Several million, right? So that means that we have, like, what, a death rate of 2% or something? And not only that, half of them are old people, right? So 2% for people under 60. And then when we look at the death rate for schools, next to nothing. Why are we not opening back the schools? Online learning is super gay. That's what I got to say. So when we look at the Politico, of course, there's going to be a lot of articles about this, blaming the Republicans, or just saying the fact that, um, that the Democrats are not getting anything done. And it's in part because of... a obstructionism from the Republicans. And I think that the Republicans are doing the right thing. Now, maybe the optics are going to be bad, but clearly the Democrats are doing really bad in terms of approval ratings, um, at least on the ground. Uh, Big Gretch, Gretchen Whitmore, it's getting very resented at because she's locking people down. J.B. Pritzker is a fat, you know, he's like Chris Christie. Uh, everybody hates him already. Also, Illinois is drowning in debt. New York is drowning in debt. And Michigan's not so bad. But still, and New, New Jersey has really high taxes, so to pay for their debt, they're going to have to raise taxes, and that's going to get this guy not reelected, or at the very least, it's going to eliminate his political capital for the next year or two. And then when we look at Andrew Cuomo, he, he's quoted in saying, I'll pay for your lunch, I'll buy you a drink, billionaires, please stay, basically. That's retarded. So we have the Democrats begging billionaires to stay because they're so desperate for money, and they're going to have their hands out for Trump. And what do they do? Uh, write Black Lives Matter in front of Trump Tower? Do you think he's going to give you money? Capiche, dude. You think New York is important for the election? Not at all. He's not going to give you money, Cuomo. Especially to build the Blasio, that scumbag. Okay? Now when we look at the debt, we're at $26 trillion. I remember not even eight months ago, we were at like $22, 23000000000000 trillion in debt. So our debt's way up. Um, federal spending is at about $5.1 trillion. We usually take in about $3 trillion in revenue a year in, in the Trump presidency, and so our our federal spending should be at like 4 point something. Our spending is way higher than, than usual. Our deficit is $2.8 trillion, and that's even without, uh, that's not counting the stimulus that may happen. So we're drowning in debt. Our revenue is at $2.3 trillion. I remember it being at one point nine. So our revenue is down a trillion dollars. Our state revenue is down. And overall, the debt is increasing. The state debt is increasing really fast. The GDP, which used to be $21 trillion or $22 trillion pre-COVID, January 2020, is now at 19, 1900, 500 or whatever. Sorry. And then when I click on the RCP approval, the Dow, and we're going to look at these little websites and we're going to see what we're looking at. Clearly... Local debt has gone up by double. Local debt, I remember, was $1 trillion like six months ago. Now it's at $2 trillion. It's kind of hard to believe, and I'm very upset at this. So clearly, um, we're drowning in debt. Um, now, let's be clear, careful. Federal debt-to-GDP ratio, 136%. Uh, when Trump began, it was at 100 So clearly, the debt has gone up by like a quarter because of this. And the interest of the debt is going to go up slowly as well. Savings are going to go down. Credit card debt is going down. That's the only thing that are looking up. But the student loans are coming up. Interest is going up. Everything is getting worse almost. And unemployment is at 10%. And surely it's coming back and the economy is going to come back. But we're losing a ton of growth. And we're losing a ton of money. And that means that we're going to have to increase taxes. And increase taxes, that's bad for everybody. And look, and for people that say, the economy matters. You have to do the stimulus. Not really. Look at this. Trump's approval, in fact, 
is close to what it was when the economy was good. So clearly this is all a perception bias. And when we look at the Dow, the Dow's mostly back as well. So that's the good news in this, a silver lining. The Dow keeps going up. Five days, constant growth. The month, pretty much constant growth here. We started the month out of July at 26. We're at 27.4 thousand on the Dow Jones. This is an important metrics for optics and it shows that the economy is recovering. Unemployment used to be 14%, now it's at 10. So unemployment is down 30% from what it was at the peak of the coronavirus in like the late spring. So that was about April, May, June. And then when you look at the year, we look at this huge Trump economy, 29,500 in February, that was the peak. And then it went down during Corona all the way in March to 18,500. And now Trump's recovered most of it, okay? So we're on track of recovering to the 30K mark probably in like six months, which is great. So you see the V-shaped recovery that Donald said. And when you look at this this V-spike, this was clearly because of the, of the re-lockdowns that this retard Democrats did. So look at this graph. Now, when we look at the graph, it's very important to understand that that I, that I this isn't really being blamed on the president too, too, too much. So look spike here then it, another v because the democrats closed things again and when you see donald trump taking office in january of 2017 he was at 20,000. so during this COVID epidemic our economy got worse than when obama had it when he left it to trump and biden's going to say oh well he ruined it no no joe biden you are going to do more conservative lockdowns longer lockdowns and that clearly would have ruined the economy and you would have had to spend more money so that would have increased the debt and lower the growth so that's ridiculous. We have to open back up ASAP. So let's look at the approval. 43%. When we look at the approval rating of Donald pre-COVID, you have him in December at about, what is that, 45%. He's at 43. So with this god-awful economy, he only went down 2%. Because Donald Trump is a cult of personality, which means a lot of the country hates him, but... A a lot of them intensely love him. Whereas with Joe Biden, a lot of the country is indifferent and a lot of the country hate him. That's the difference, okay? Now let's look at the, the approval rating by the economy and if we open another tab, we can look at both graphs at the same time. So job approval is important, of course. Obama won with 40 something, this isn't that bad. So right here, Trump is more approved than the RCP average on the economy than he's disapproved by a little bit. And that's with this a terrible economy. That's how much the businessman thing helps Donald Trump and how much Sleepy Joe is not trusted with the economics of the country. And clearly, people on Twitter are swaying your mind. And I look at Twitter, and it's very bad for the president. But Twitter's really gay, and it's very liberal as well. So let's look at all these polls. Polls at 53 you know, a lot of these have them down a lot, but these are kind of fake. You know, outliers are gay. Um, now, if you look at his approval ratings way back when, if you look at 20, 2019, his approval rating was at 53 on average. Now it's 48. His approval rating on the economy only went down 5%. The economy is not the biggest deal here. And when you say, my economy was the best until the China virus came, and you blame the response on China, and when you blame the economic stagnation on the Democrat policies, he's gonna get the higher approval rating with the economics, okay, in that respect. And all these battleground states are fake news, of course. So guys, let's open back up, and let's open back up quick, because clearly this isn't working for anybody. And Donald Trump has a packed schedule, I do get that, but the more he does press conferences, the higher his approval rating will go, and the more that we can definitively say that we shouldn't concede to the Democrats in stimulus talks any longer. And I know Nick Fuentes said, well, we should, we should concede everything to the Democrats as long as they lower immigration, because that's all he cares about while he's in his mother's basement. But don't listen to people in their basements, and that includes furry Nick and sleepy Joe Biden. And thank you for watching, guys. Tell me if you reached the end. But this is all I have for you guys. Goodbye.